Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? How do you define who the disciple is? Normally people think the disciples are the ones who go to church every week and who never misses Bible studies and who always are uh, in the front, uh, front line when it comes to ministry. Of course, it can be an image of being a disciple of Christ Jesus. But what is really the essence of being disciple of Christ Jesus? What is the true disciple of Jesus Christ? So that is the topic that you and I need to uh, are going to study today from uh, John chapter 8 verses 31 through 32. So I don't st let's look at the passage together. It says, Jesus was saying to those Jews, to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you to us, the truth will make you free. Now, there are two things I want to draw from this passage. Uh, the three things. The first one is continue in his word. If you want to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you must to be you must continue in his word. And then secondly, you will know the truth if you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ, and then the truth will set you free. So the first one is more of the definition. If you truly continue in his word, the true disciples are the ones who continue in Jesus' word, then you will know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. So the number two and three are more like a result of being the true disciple of Christ Jesus. So let's look at one by one. First, let's look at the verse 31. It says, so Jesus is saying to those. Now, let me give you some context here. So Jesus was talking with uh, several people here, and then there were people who were uh, trying to follow Jesus. And then, you know, G Jesus was uh, amazing. And of course, he performed lots of miracles, and he spoke like no other. And there are quite a number of people who are uh, following and they, they even put their faith in Jesus. So in the prior ver the previous verse, which is verse 30, there are people who are coming to Jesus and then they say they believe in Jesus Christ. Now, if you just stop right there, now you might think like, wow, this is great. You know, Jesus is being believed among people. And that is like a, uh, what the, the pastors, which or the church leaders would really want to see. It's like a Billy Graham's crusade. A lot of people uh, respond to the altar call. They come, come as, as they are and then they uh, they cry and they make a decision, make decision to follow Jesus Christ. What an awesome ministry uh, turnout it, it, it would be. And uh, that's definitely something that you can say, you know, we, we, we can call it for a day because uh, this is the definitely success of a ministry. Look at Jesus' ministry. He is flourishing. He's gaining traction. Lots of people coming to Jesus. However, that is not what Jesus was doing. Jesus never said here that, uh, wow, that's great. It's a good turnout and I'm so satisfied. Let's move on to the next place because, you know, we already have lots of people coming to uh, me and believing in me. But let's look at uh, today's passage again. The, go back to verse 31 because it says, Jesus is saying to those Jews who had believed him, okay? He said, Instead of saying, well done, great job, and yeah, just uh, I'm so ha happy for you. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. Now, disciples of mine, it means disciples of Jesus. If you do this, then you will truly be my disciple. You, you will be truly disciple of Jesus Christ. So we have to pay attention to this one. What, what, did, what did Jesus say? If you continue, okay, continue, another translation, abide or remain. It all means the same thing. If you continue, if you remain, if you abide in my word. In other words, if you continue, if you remain in Jesus' word, if you're believing in him continually, then you are truly disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, if you flip it, it sounds like the, it, it, is, it is this. In other words, if you, are, if you stop believing in Jesus' word, if you stop abiding in him, then you are not true disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, this 
it's very possible because a lot of people coming to Jesus and they say, well, we love you and we just want to follow you. But, you know, anything can happen, right? Life, life tends to be uh, very difficult. And uh, if you, you've been following Jesus for uh, 15 years and 12, uh, 17 years, but nothing has been changed or even things were getting worse and you feel like God is not there anymore and God is not helping you anymore and then you, you want to just give up on the way so you're not following Jesus anymore then if that's the case then you're not true this person is not a true disciple because Jesus said very clearly here those who continue in Jesus's word that they are the true disciples it is very possible that one time um, just belief like I believe in Jesus like 10 years ago, but if I'm not believing in Jesus, now I'm not a true disciple of Christ Jesus. So uh, just because you accepted Jesus about 25 years ago at Billy Graham, Live, Billy Graham uh, the crusade, if you're not walking with Jesus Christ right now, then that is definitely a sure sign that you're not um, true Christian, true followers of Jesus Christ. It is very true because John chapter 6, verse 66 you know, Jesus, they saw Jesus feeding 5,000 people with five bread and two fish, and they were fascinated by it. And then they came to Jesus, and they're looking for Jesus. However, when Jesus said something uh, very, um, how to say, opposite to what they were thinking, then a lot of people left to Jesus, and they were not following Jesus anymore. So only 12 disciples remained with Jesus. So how many were true disciples in that context? Only 12 people who stayed with Jesus. They were the only uh, true disciples. Even one of them was Judas Iscariot, who was to, be, who was to uh, betray Jesus eventually. So we have to be um, very discerning just because a lot of people come to church and uh, they say they believe in Jesus. Of course, praise God for that because there can be uh, genuine belief among them. However, the true true. Um, the uh, the salvation true disciples are evidenced by their perseverance if they truly continue in the word of god or not that is the uh, the measurement of uh, being true disciple or not okay now the second point is if you are true disciples of christ jesus then something happened let's look at uh, today's verse it says then you are truly you are truly disciples of mine, and you will, so this is not a you know, probably possibility, but it says you will know the truth. So the second, you will know the truth. But here, this is more than informational knowledge, because some people might say, yeah, I already know the truth, because you know I've been coming to uh, church and I've been participating in a Bible study for a long time never missed this YouTube channel thank you for that but uh, if you are saying you know I already know enough about the uh, information about the Bible that's not what Jesus was saying here it's not about it's not he's not saying knowing about the truth uh, as an information but this is the knowing the truth because uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What does that mean? Truth is not a conceptual thing, but it is the person of Jesus Christ because Jesus said, I am the truth. So it's more than information. It's more than knowledge, but it is the person of Christ Jesus. So know the truth means know Christ Jesus. If you remain in him, if you remain in his teaching, in his word, that you are truly disciple of Christ Jesus, then you will know him. You will know the truth. That's what it really means here. There are lots of people uh, for following Jesus at the time 2,000 years ago. Many of them, are, of course, uh, many of them are Jewish people. And uh, just think about this. They heard Jesus' preaching. So they re already received some type of information from Jesus but not just that they were Jewish people meaning that they were so accustomed to uh, the Old Testament the synagogue is their life and they have to memorize a uh, lot of verses so it's like uh, they in, in terms of information or knowledge about the Bible probably they are the expert of experts they know about the knowledge they know about the glimpse of the truth even however what, what they were lacking was 
the true relate true knowledge of Christ Jesus. Now, how can you get the true knowledge of Jesus? True knowledge of the truth. It is based on the relationship, whether you truly love the Lord or not. It's like marriage relationship. Let's say you've been married for 15 years and 20 years, 25 years. Do you know your spouse? Of course, what am I saying? Of course, you know the spouse, but you are not just knowing about your spouse as an information, like I know her name, birthday, her height or weight. And of course, those are just information that can be written anywhere in the website. But I'm not asking about that kind of knowledge. I'm asking you about the knowledge about your spouse as the person. You know her personality, you know her everything, because you've been living together with her. So that in that knowledge is not Wikipedia knowledge, but it is knowledge based on your relationship with your spouse. Likewise, know the truth. That means it's coming out of the knowledge based on the relationship with the truth, relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you're being loved by Jesus and you love him so much. So you not only he knows you, of course he knows you, but also you know him as the Lord and Savior, not as the uh, Sunday school um, quiz, pop quiz type of information, but as based on relationship, loving relationship with God. So that is really the, the knowledge of the truth right here. If you are true disciple of Christ Jesus, that you, you are continuing, you are remaining uh, in his word, so you are his disciple that you know him you know the truth and then thirdly what happens if you when you know the truth the truth will you know the truth and the truth will make you free be free okay now be free from what now this is where a lot of jewish people in chapter 8 was turned off because when jesus said this the truth, know the truth, and then truth will set you free. First of all, they might think like, you know, I already have the knowledge about the truth, but why should I be free? Because I'm already free. We're not bond. We're not in bondage of anything else. Now they have all this traditional mindset that they are the descendants of Abraham, and they're just free. We don't need anything. Um, that kind of mindset was blo blocking them or hindering them from believing in Jesus Christ. But we see here stark contrast between Jesus being the truth and Satan being the father of lies. In uh, uh, John chapter 8, verse 44, it says, Satan is the father of lie, and he speaks the lie out of his nature. So by nature, he is liar. But the problem is, a lot of people who are not following Jesus Christ, they were they did not believe in Jesus because ultimately they are not of God, but they are of Satan, and uh, Satan is their father, and uh, they were just full of lies, and there is no room for them uh, for the truth to be inside them. So that was the problem that we see in the cha John chapter eight. Anyhow, this um, these people could not believe in Jesus Christ, and uh, they. Uh, they did have they had no idea where and what they need to be free from of course jesus is saying here be free from bondage of sin and death know the truth know christ jesus who is the truth and this truth jesus will set you free jesus is going to be the only one who is going to set you free who will free you from the bondage of sin and death now uh, some people might say you know uh, look at that people look at the person you know that person is so respected and uh, that person is um, you know almost in near perfect but in front of God even that person is is slave to sin and death because uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 10 it says all have sinned there is no one righteous and Romans 6 23 the wages of sin is death so because all of us are sinners and we must die, but the physical death is not the end. There will be an eternal death, which is uh, being suffering in hell. So that is the bondage of sin and death. However, the goodness is this, that even though no one can pay uh, his or her sin, 
and because the sin is so bigger than us and that we have no power to do that so powerful God Christ Jesus himself came down to the world and he took our sins and he paid the penalty uh, at the cross by his sacrifice by his death on the cross for atoning for our sin but he was risen from the dead to justify us before God so Jesus Christ did it all he paid the penalty he died for our sin and he was risen from the dead for our justification so Jesus is the only one only truth who can truly set us free that's what Jesus is saying come to me and I'll give you living water as we learn from uh, John chapter 7 and also Jesus is saying believe in me continue in my word I will set you free do not leave me do not leave me but come to me and stay with me abide in me uh, and know the truth and the truth will set you free from the bondage of sin and death so this is the amazing amazing uh, work of God in the Word of God even when we uh, continue in walking with the Lord then he will set us free from every, everything because he set us free from the deepest problem which is the bondage of sin and death so that is really what Jesus is saying here so and that is the pure um, the uh, the evidence of the true disciples the true disciples are the ones who are staying with Jesus Christ and by doing so they know the truth they know Christ Jesus and they are set free so how should we live first of all we need to remain in Christ remain in his word but how can we do that now practically speaking we need to walk in his word continually every day through intaking God's word the Bible the message uh, the, uh, the the Bible the Word of God continually every day now because the Word of God is inspired the Bible is inspired by God as we see in a second uh, Timothy chapter 3 uh, verses 16 through 17 so it must be a daily routine to uh, read God's Word and meditate and even memorize uh, Bible verse and uh, you might think like oh that's just a mundane thing or you know I have a different way of keeping my relationship with God okay but how can you have a good relationship with God apart from the Bible the very word that describes who Jesus is there's no way to do that so that we have to we need to uh, develop this discipline every day to intake God's Word and uh, pray together pray every day so that um, we our relationship uh, and uh, our relationship with God will continue to grow and also do not stop because we have so many temptations along the way you know these days it's just a battle because a lot of people you know uh, just spend hours and hours and hours in the smartphone and just scrolling down through uh, junk and which are not uh, spiritual and even you know spiritually evil so we but they are not spending time at all uh, in the Word of God how can they continue now perseverance is significant evidence of your uh, true discipleship if you're truly a disciple of Christ Jesus then uh, your life would be the evidence your perseverance would be the evidence because um, Matthew chapter 24 uh, verse 13 also says you know uh, those who endure until the end will be saved so that is also the same line that uh, you know true disciples are the ones who endure till the end so how can you do that without uh, in taking God's Word each day it's like a nourishment for our spirit if you do not eat then you cannot endure you will die soon likewise if you not if you if you do not intake God's word you will die spiritually and you'll be deceived by Satan right away so we have to be careful in keeping up with the spiritual discipline of intaking God's word uh, to endure and to persevere in our walk with the Lord secondly pray that you will know the truth again know the truth is not about the knowledge of course knowledge is important but knowledge is not everything knowledge itself cannot change you or transform you information cannot change you but the truth will change you so we need to know the truth now again the truth is Christ Jesus is the person of Jesus so how can you do that now uh, if you love someone then you will do everything to spend time with that person you will drink coffee with her, uh, with a person you would eat and you will play so that you will get to know that person likewise to know the truth spend time with the truth 
it should be 24 7 how can you do that i know you're busy for work and you know a lots of schedules but in your heart you can still pray your heart you pray that you would be led by the holy spirit in everything that you do so that uh as the as the word of god leads you uh, do not hesitate to obey his word always be prompt to uh, obey his word and experience his presence each day even at your workplaces even at uh, any place anywhere that you go and then lastly be set free. The truth will set you free. Now, if you're a true Christian, then you are ultimately set free from bondage of sin and death. You are free. Uh, you're not. Uh, you're not going to be condemned anymore. You are a child of God, and that identity is secured. But not just the ultimate free freedom, but you will also experience the small freedom. Um, every day as you walk with the Lord as you know the truth that God loves you and God is your sovereign father so you don't have to worry about uh, death you don't have to worry about anything so that will free you up from all the pressures from people pressures from fear and pressures from all those things so that you will experience this freedom uh, that comes from the Lord each day so what a great truth it is and that is the life of disciple so the disciples are the ones who continue in the word of God and they know the truth and they are set free from all the bondage of sin and death and um, every fear that they might uh, have in their life so let's become the true disciple of Christ Jesus by continuing in his word let's pray Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for reminding us of this great truth about who the disciples are. Father, we want to be the true disciple. So, Father, please help us. Help us to continue in your word. We know there are lots of temptations in, in our life, and uh, sometimes we just want to give up. But, Father, please help us and hold us uh, strongly with your strong arm so that we'll not fall into temptation, but we will continue in your word so that we'll truly experience the mighty truth and uh, experience the freedom that the truth uh, brings. Father, we thank you, praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray it. Amen.